In this video, we discuss the table of contrast coefficients. This table can be utilized to uh, compute the effects and uh, will be used to find the divisor for computing the sum of square. As we know, the sum of square is contrast square divided by a divisor. Now, what is that divisor? That divisor will actually differ for every effect. So, this table helps us find out the divisor for sum of square associated with each of the effect. So first we list down all the yields or say treatment combination in the standard order. First we will list down the coefficients for the main effects of A and B. So we list down the coefficients for linear effect of A and quadratic effect of A. Then linear effect of B then quadratic effect of B. To list the coefficient for the linear effect of A, note that if any treatment combination does not co contain A, then the corresponding coefficient will be minus 1. If it contains A, then the coefficient will be 0. And if it contains A square, the coefficient will be 1. So let us start. 1 does not contain A, so coefficient will be minus 1. Corresponding to A, it will be 0. And corresponding to A square, it will be 1. B does not contain A, so minus 1. AB contains A, so 0. A square B contains A square, so 1. B square does not contain A, so coefficient will be minus 1. AB square contains A, so coefficient will be 0. And A square B square contains A square, so coefficient will be 1. For AQ, if the treatment combination does not contain A, then the coefficient will be 1. If it contains A, then the coefficient will be minus 2. And if it contains A square, then the coefficient will again be 1. So for the quadratic effect of A, treatment combination 1 does not contain A. So coefficient will be 1. For A, it will be minus 2. And A square, it will be 1. B does not contain A, so coefficient is 1. AB contains A, so coefficient is minus 2. And A square B contains A square, so coefficient will be 1. Similarly, for B square, it will be 1. For AB square, it will be minus 2. And for A square B square, it will be 1. Similarly, we find the coefficients of the contrast for the linear effect of B. Any treatment combination that does not contain B will have coefficient minus 1. And if it contains B, then coefficient 0. And if it contains B square, then coefficient 1. So 1 A A square does not contain B. So coefficient will be minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. B A B A square B contain B. So the coefficient will be 0, 0, and 0 and b square a b square a square b square contain b square so the coefficient will be 1 1 and 1 now similarly for quadratic effect of b if a treatment combination contains b then coefficient will be minus 2 otherwise 1 so 1 a and a square does not contain b so coefficient will be 1 1 1 and b a b a square b contain b so coefficient will be minus 2 b square a b square and a square b square contain b square so coefficient will be 1 now using these coefficients for the linear and quadratic effect of a and b we find the coefficient for the interaction components a l b l a l b q a q b l and a q b q so first let us list down the coefficients for a l b l the coefficients for ALBL can be sim found simply by multiplying the corresponding coefficients for AL and BL. That is coefficients for linear effect of A and linear effect of B. So corresponding to treatment combination 1, the coefficients of ALBL will be minus 1 into minus 1 which is 1. Then 0 into minus 1, it will be 0. 1 into minus 1, it will be minus 1. Minus 1 into 0, 0. 0 into 0, 0. 1 into 0, 0. Minus 1 into 1, minus 1. 0 into 1, 0. And 1 into 1, I get 1. The coefficient for the interaction component A, L, B, Q, which will be simply the product of the coefficients for A, L and B, Q. So minus 1 into 1 is minus 1, 0 into 1 is 0 and then we get 1, 2, 0, minus 2, 
minus 1 0 1 and similarly for the interaction components AQBL and AQBQ for AQBL the coefficients will be the product of the corresponding coefficients of AQ and BL and similarly for AQBQ it will be product of the coefficients for AQ and BQ now using these coefficients for the main effects and interaction effect we find the divisor for the corresponding sum of square so the divisor is actually sum of square of the coefficients multiplied by the number of replication of the experiment if we assume the experiment is replicated n times then the divisor for sum of square for linear effect of a will be 6 times n because the sum of square of the coefficients is 6. Similarly, the sum of square of coefficients for AQ is 18. So, the divisor will be 18N. Sum of square of coefficients for PL is again 6. So, the divisor for sum of square for linear effect of B will be 6N. Similarly, we find the divisor for other sum of square for the remaining effects and interactions. As the number of factors in the three level factorial design increase, computing the table of contrast coefficient may become very tedious and hence the computation of divisor will also become very tedious. Therefore, we need a simpler method which can help us to find the divisor for the sum of squares easily. So, let us discuss a method which will make the job of computation of divisor very easier. So, to find the divisor for sum of square, let us consider this table of coefficient for orthogonal poly polynomial. Here, phi naught, phi 1, phi 2 are orthogonal polynomials with coefficients 1, 1, 1 under phi naught and under phi 1 it is minus 1, 0, 1 and under phi 2 it is 1, minus 2 and 1. You can observe these coefficients are mutually orthogonal. The sum of square of these coefficient is written down here as dx. So under phi naught the sum of square of coefficient is 3. Under phi 1 the sum of square of coefficient is 2 and under phi 2 it is 6. Suppose we have 3 raised to 2 factorial design and we want to find the sum of square for a square b square. So this will be the square of the contrast for a square b square divided by dx1, dx2 and n dx1, dx2, dxn are the divisor for this sum of square and n is actually the number of replicates of the experiment. To find dx1 and dx2, we need to refer to the corresponding exponents of a and b. So to find dx1, we need to look at the exponent of a which is 2. So we need to look into the column of phi 2 and the value of dx is 6. So, dx1 is equal to 6. To find dx2, we need to look at the exponent of b, which is 2. So, again we need to look into the column of phi2 and the value of dx is 6. So, dx2 is 6. So, the divisor for the sum of square associated with the effect a square b square is 6 into 6 into n. Now, suppose if it was 3 raised to 3 factorial design and one wants to find the sum of square for the effect bc square. The effect bc square can also be written as a raised to 0 b into c square. Now the divisor for this sum of square as it is 3 raised to 3 factorial design we will be having dx1 dx2 dx3 into n. Now to find the dx1 we need to look at the exponent of a which is 0. So we look into the column of phi naught and we find dx is equal to 3. So dx1 is equal to 3. To find dx2 we need to look at the exponent of b which is 1. So we look into the column of phi1 and the dx is 2. So dx2 is equal to 2. And dx3 can be found by looking at the exponent of c which is 2 and we look into the column of phi2 and dx value is 6. So dx3 is equal to 6. So the divisor for the sum of square due to bc square is 3 into 2 into 6 into n for 3 raised to 3 factorial design. Let us discuss another example of 3 raised to 4 factorial design and we want to find sum of square due to abd square. 
This ABD square we can write as AB C raised to 0 into D square. So this sum of square will be ABD square, the whole square that is the square of the contrast ABD square divided by DX1, DX2, DX3, DX4 into N. To find dx1, let us look at the exponent of a, which is 1. So we need to look into the column of phi1 and the dx value is 2. For dx2, the exponent of b is 1. So we look into the column of phi1, dx value is 2. So again we write 2. c has exponent 0. So to find dx3, we need to look into the column of phi0 and the dx value is 3. And to find dx4, we look at the exponent of d, which is 2. So we look into the column of phi2 and dx value is 6. So we get the value of dx4 as 6 into n. So this is how we can find sum of square for any effect, be it any design, whether 3 raised to 2 or 3 raised to 3 or 3 raised to 4. One can also use the formula d equal to 2 raised to h into 3 raised to k minus p times n as the formula for divisor where h is the order of the interaction and p is the number of factors in the interaction at intermediate level. For example, if we have to find the sum of square for abd square then it is the contrast for abd square the whole square divided by the divisor d which we can find as d equal to 2 raised to h where h in this case is 3 because it is 3 factor interaction so 2 raised to 3 and 3 raised to 4 minus 2 into n because it is 3 raised to 4 design for which we are finding the sum of square for abd square so k is equal to 4 and there are two factors in the interaction which are at intermediate level which are a and b so 3 raised to 4 minus 2 into n this gives us 72 n as the divisor to understand the logic behind this formula note that the value of dx which is a component of divisor in the denominator is equal to 3 if any factor in the interaction is at low level dx is equal to 2 if any factor in the interaction is at intermediate level while it is equal to 6 if any factor in the interaction is at high level. Note that if one has to find the divisor for sum of square of an h factor interaction then the remaining k minus h factors are at the low level. This means for each of these factors the divisor will be 3 hence there will be 3 raised to k minus h in the denominator as a component of the divisor. In an H factor interaction, P factors will be at intermediate level while the remaining H minus P factors will be at high level. For each of the factors at intermediate level, the divisor will be 2 and therefore 2 raised to P will be another component of the divisor. And for each of the H minus P factors which are at high level, the divisor will be 6 and 6 raised to h minus p will be another component of the divisor. Therefore, the divisor is 2 raised to p into 6 raised to h minus p into 3 raised to k minus h into n. This we can write as 2 raised to p into 2 raised to h minus p into 3 raised to h minus p into 3 raised to k minus h into n. Therefore, the divisor d is equal to 2 raised to h into 3 raised to k minus p into n. Now let me show you the ANOVA for 3 raised to 2 design. So see this, this is ANOVA for 3 raised to 2 design. In the source of variation, we have listed all the linear and quadratic component of the main effects and the interaction component. So see A represents the linear effect of A, A square represents the quadratic effect of A. Similarly B and B square and AB, A square B, AB square and A square B square are the 
interaction component of interaction between A and B. Each of these effects will have one degree of freedom. If there are n replication of the experiment, then under each replication we have nine observations. So in all we have nine into n observation. Therefore, total degrees of freedom is nine n minus one. And the degrees of freedom associated with error will be nine times n minus one, which we find by subtracting these eight degrees of freedom, one for each of the effect from 9n minus 1. Some of square for each of the effect must be listed here and we just discuss how can we find them. Sum of square due to total we find as usual which is sum of square of all the observations minus the correction factor. Correction factor is square of grand total divided by total number of observations and sum of square due to error we find by subtracting all these sum of square for various effects from the sum of square due to total. Mean sum of square we find by dividing sum of squares by corresponding degrees of freedom and then to test the significance of all these effects we divide the corresponding mean sum of squares by the mean square error and we can reject H0 for any effect if the corresponding test statistic F0 is greater than the quantile from F distribution with numerator degrees of freedom 1 and error degrees of freedom 9 times n minus 1 and right tail probability alpha. Note that this ANOVA table where we have listed all the main effect and interaction components can be used only if the factors are quantitative. If not, then one has to treat the design as two-way design in which both the factors are at three levels and use the conventional method of computation of ANOVA with ANOVA table given by as this in which we have listed only the main factors A and B and the main interaction component AB. If you notice we have not listed the component of the main effects that is linear and quadratic components and the components of the interaction. The main effects have degrees of freedom 2 for each and interaction AB has 4 degrees of freedom.